I feel like abstract painting, it gets a bad rap. Ew, anyone could do that. I could do that. It's just paint thrown on paper. You've probably heard it all. And honestly, I felt that in the past. The tug to always paint something, even when my soul was telling me just to get marks on the page, giving me a pull to express something deeper that I couldn't really put traditional imagery or even words to. You feel me? So you want to try abstract art, but the seeming lack of structure to the genre feels way too overwhelming. Okay, let's paint together today and I'll walk you right through the overwhelm, or I guess I'll paint you right through. Let's talk about supplies. You could use old artwork. I mean, the stuff that you like shove in a drawer that you wish had never happened. Yeah, as long as it's not got a lot going on and is lighter or low contrast, it's going to be perfect for this exercise. Now me, I did just write a new book, and so I'm going to be using one of the pages from my new book, Mixed Media Adventures. It's basically a page full of abstract circles, watercolor washiness, that I'm going to use as the starting point or the springboard for my piece of artwork. Yeah, you know what, we're not going to call this an exercise, we're creating a piece of art. And next up for supplies, just some random, randomness. I want you to use whatever. I'm gonna go with watercolor, markers, and some bleed proof white. You could use acrylic, pastels, whatever is sitting on your table right now or is only gonna take you about two minutes to scrounge up, that's just perfect. I know there's some out there and I'll be frank, it's usually those who are uneducated or undereducated about art making that would say abstract art doesn't take a lot of skill, but it actually does. It takes kind of two different facets of skill. You're going to want to know how to make some marks, be comfortable with mark making. You're also going to want to know how to connect with your emotions and how to attach those emotions to color choices, line quality, brush selection, all the things. Now, is that to say I want you to get stuck in those kind of decisions if you're unsure? Absolutely not. It may sound like a contradiction, but if you start feeling like you're getting stuck in the decisions, I want you to just go. I want you to just go for it, do what you do, do what comes to mind and have fun with it. All right, there are a couple of things I want you to think about as I am working through my own composition. And hopefully these moments will help you get comfortable with making your own. I want you to think about some marks that you are very comfortable making teardrops, little press and lifts, or maybe it's my press dragon lift. Whatever those marks are, I want you to use them the first time you start touching brush or marker or pen to the page. For me, it's teardrops. I use teardrops as the basis for a lot of what I do in art making. So I'm kind of creating these continuous, floppy, interconnected teardrops. And every time I go back to the palette, I am mixing in a new aspect of the color. And so over time, I'm getting this really subtle kind of ombre from a really dark blue all the way to a burgundy into a red. Another type of mark that I make often are dashes. So I'm going to incorporate some dashes. And remember, just like with any other bit of artwork that you're making, you are going to go through moments of ugly. You're going to be sitting there thinking this is just junk, but you just need to sit through it, get through it, and you'll come out the other side. I promise. Another key thing to do as you're working through an abstract piece is to repeat. If something worked in one area, repeat it in a slightly different way in another area of the composition. So for example, I felt like the dashes in the black marker worked really nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and do some thicker dashes in my bleed proof white with a big old brush. So it's kind of like a repeat. Repeat works amazing for building really strong compositions. And yes, composition still applies in abstract art, which like I knew you knew that. But again, we've got some haters out there. So we just got to clarify. <laughs> Friends, are you having a good time? Do you feel like this whole abstract conversation is going to be a beneficial one for you? And if you do, would you go ahead and give this video a boop? That's a like. And you know what? I just love it when you're having a good time and when I see the, the likes or the boops go up, I know that that's happening and that makes me feel really good. 
Another detail you can think about when building your abstract composition when you're not sure quite what to do next is add the same marks but with a different supply. So I went back to that central circle and I went over top of those teardrop shapes that I had sketched in with a thinner brush and now I'm adding in some moments of those teardrops with the white and a fuller brush. And of course you can repeat any of this at any moment. Next, another detail I like to think of is smudging. I don't know what it is, but smudging in abstract and representational artwork is so incredibly dramatic and alluring and honestly, usually quite effective. So give it a whirl. And yep, you can smudge watercolor. Get some color down on the page while it's juicy. Take your finger or a paper towel and just smudge it out. All right, head into comments and let me know. Are you gonna give this a go? Are you gonna use some old artwork of yours? What are your plans? We all wanna hear about it. And maybe you have my book and you have a page selected just for this project. And of course, while you're at it, go ahead and give this video a boop. That's a like. I'm gonna go ahead and go quiet for a few moments and let this further unfold. But stick around because I have probably the most important point to make still. abstract painting friends one of the most important details to remember is this and I don't say this to intimidate but composition rules all of the quote-unquote rules of composition or guidelines of composition really still apply if you want to have a visually pleasing piece of art when it's all said and done now you might need a compositional refresher and if you do i want you to watch this video next it's just perfect and it's going to get you really excited about your next composition until next time though happy painting